Hey guys, Sam here, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm feeling very old school, so I've come to pumping iron to train shoulders, and I'm gonna focus on old school exercises, mostly with the barbells and dumbbells, all for delts and a little bit traps. Maybe a couple of finishes at the end, but this is the focus for today. Then we're gonna sit down and talk a little bit about planning your own diets and what numbers you need to play with for that, and I'm gonna teach you how you can do that for yourself. And if there's time after that, it's a massive cheat meal. See you inside. A little bit sleepy, so settling in now for a pre-workout. That looks positively radioactive, so it's probably quite strong. The plan of attack for today is to start on some barbell push presses. So it's like the military press, but standing up, where you can give yourself a little bit of a push from the legs if you're failing there. Because I just want to see how heavy I can handle it on the barbell, the way that shoulder training has been going at the moment. And then move on to stuff with dumbbells. I'll show you some isolations with dumbbells for a change, like on the rear delts. Then, uh, then finish on the equipment that's for isolations as well on the delts and, and see what else I can find. But shoulder training's been going well, as we've seen in previous days. And I just want to keep the variety of exercises going so that I keep the videos interesting and helpful for showing you exercises you may not have seen. But Hopefully you enjoy the workout. If you're just here for the nutrition bit, you can by all means skip ahead. I found a suitable rack, and as it's the first time in doing the push presses for ages, I'm starting with just one plate on each side, and how I get on with this will determine exactly where I go from there. So, set one. That's pretty tough, I won't be going too much heavier than this. It's been a long time since these. I was doing the seated military press, but again, even that not so much has been focusing on behind the neck press. So it's good to get back into these and see where I'm at. Now I've put another 10 on each side. And I don't suppose I'll be going any heavier than this today, getting back into this one. Set two. No. No. Oh, I'm going to leave this in because I do leave in everything that happens in the workouts, but slightly disappointed with that, honestly. I had been wanting to get two plates on each side. It's supposed to be easier doing this than the seated, but I feel a lot less stable than seated, so. I'm going to take that right back down, right back down to uh, one plate a side. I had hopes that doing three plates each side on a plate loaded machine above the head press would have transferred over to this sort of thing, but uh, apparently not. So I'm going to stay in my lane with this and just one plate set to. Sometimes free weights is really a leveler, you know. And here we go for set three. Can only improve from here. It's one to come back to for sure. My next exercise here is dumbbell overhead press, keeping with the theme of free weights and old school. And I'm just gonna try and push a little bit heavier than what I was 
upstairs with the barbell to determine whether this is a, an issue with me and barbells and the angle that it keeps you in or a free weights thing in general and if I'm going to have to sort of readjust my routine to pay more attention to the free weights than, than these plate loaded machines and smith machines and such like so set one That was, in total, 10 kilos heavier than the barbell. So, playing with these exercises this time, I think I'm going to stick with the dumbbells going forward before I return to the barbell again. So I'm going to go a little heavier than that for set two, and depending on how that turns out, I'll go from there. So I'm moving this up to the 40 kilo dumbbells now. And it's been a little while since I touched these as well, I think. So seeing how this set goes will determine what I'm doing with the rest of them. But I'm really heating up down here. Am I Okay. Here goes. getting going now. Plan is the same again with these. Just get them in the lifting up position. Ideally, when you're going heavier, heavier than this really, you have two spotters and then pass them to you. It'll save your energy for the actual motion of the exercise, but I'm used to training on, training on my own and uh, it's okay with these weights, they're only 40s after all. good well it feels good <laughs> there wasn't as many reps as that second set now and what I was going to show you is all down the rack drop sets with side lateral raises but it's become quite busy in here and uh, I don't want to get in everyone's way doing something like that so we're gonna say that was the old school portion free weights overhead pressing and find something else for the isolations now to uh, share the equipment here because uh, it's quite a small room and I won't be going down the rack in here. So instead of the dumbbell side laterals and running down the rack with those, this plate loaded machine can give me some drop sets if that's what I want to do for the last couple of sets. And this Watson side lateral raise machine has become my favourite isolation machines for side delts so it's still going to be a very good workout set one here too heavy
This is like really one of those like feeling it kind of exercises. I find with the machine it's kind of harder to swing it with the, the dumbbells as well. Set two. Previously, doing all my rear belt exercises first out of my isolations, but I had noticed that that was progressing better than the, the side, so I've kind of switched it around, starting on things like this and side dumbbell raises before anything like a rear belt fly or similar. But this set and my next one are going to be my switch in for going down the rack that I would have done with the dumbbells. I'm just gonna do a several stage drop set of taking the pin out between between parts of the set. So wish me luck. Set three and first drop set. Do a drop set you don't pace yourself you go to failure in every part of it so i'm only going down by one pin and the tiny rest while i set up again will mean that i can still do a few reps down by just one peg again so I'm number four now By one peg again. Number three. out and this should be my lot that is brutally hard work on the belts get my breath back and then run down that one more time except I'll start on start on number five and run it down for the last one right let's tear through this drop set sequence one more time and we're done on this this machine okay <laughs> part one of five Now, straight back in. Uh, uh, uh. Down 
same peg. Straight back in. Last one. Oh, guys, come on. Give me a thumbs up. Right there, if you think I'm training hard enough. I believe I am today. So it's cleared out a little bit in the dumbbell room, and that gives me opportunity to show you a different exercise going back to dumbbells for the rear delts. So I'm gonna do rear delts leaning on my front on an incline bench at about 45 degrees, and then doing flies out like this. It's pretty good for the rear delts, obviously. If you've got access to a pec deck and rear delt fly machine, you probably feel it a little bit more easily in the rear delts, and you kind of get the same resistance all the way through the motion. But if you've just got access to dumbbells, this is still well worthwhile doing. So I'm gonna show you this today. I was just speaking to a very wise man upstairs. He's training legs today, and he explains that he always trains legs on a Monday, because no one else will be doing that. And he's got his whole split organized to not be clashing days with everyone, chest on Monday, back on Tuesday, and all the rest of it. And uh, he's getting through it quickly, guys. So if you are limited on time, <laughs> look at the order of everyone else, else's split and do the opposite of that. Well, maybe the same split, but in a completely different order. And you won't be waiting for equipment nearly so much. And back to work for me. I certainly don't feel that I need to do any more on side delts in particular after all of those long multi-stage drop sets that's the best i felt it in my side delts for as long as i can remember anyway set two rear delt flies So that's all the rear delts and isolation work done there with the dumbbells. But before we leave this room, I'm just admiring some of the awesome framed quotes they've got amongst the pictures. So they've got an Arnold one up here who says, the last three or four reps is what makes the muscle grow. This area of pain divides the champion from someone else who is not a champion. That's what most people lack, having the guts to go on and just say they'll go through the pain no matter what happens. <laughs> so, that's brilliant, isn't it? And then we've got, we've got the gym owner next to one of the most 
iconic pictures of Arnold replicating it rather well. Actually looking quite a bit drier as well, which I'm, I'm a fan of. All this kind of thing really puts me more in the head space for a good session, you know, so. One more exercise as a little finisher. I've shown you the old school stuff today. I'll do one more exercise as a finisher and then we'll get on to this um, nutrition and planning your own bulking diet business. Right, this one here is just my little finisher. This gives a slight extra bit of work on the deltoids by moving round in this kind of arc that you don't get when you're pressing straight overhead and I just kind of fluff, want to finish on something that just feels nice and more delts and then we'll, uh, we'll get talking about food, about nutrition plans. And that is critical. It's only going to be two sets here, so I may as well just wait it out and give you the one camera angle. Because I've given the tour around this whole place. I've given round, round and about all the gyms that I'm using, amongst the ones that I've just visited in the gym tour playlist. So if you want to see all of this place, everything they've got, and all the other gyms that I'm using that are so good, check out the gym tour playlist. All the nutrition stuff, if that's your bag, have also got their separate playlist. So, you know, obviously, I like it if you're following the whole journey here, but if you have a specific interest, I've tried to organize the channel into different playlists so that you can, you know, just explore the area that you're concentrating on, really. Anyway, last set of the day, and then we'll get into this diet planning stuff. Okay, walk this way and we'll find a place to sit down because if you're stuck with your games, most likely this is going to be the area that you're going to need to focus on and make changes to to uh, really get moving forwards again. <laughs> I've just realised as I've checked the camera here that I always want to settle in this spot to talk when I'm down this way. I made the mistake of sitting right behind this as someone's pants on my head so bear with me i'm gonna set up again right that's much better i think i think the only problem that's going to arise now is if i'm struggling to breathe while sat down because of the different posture now that i'm sort of obese <laughs> look the bulking is going well and that's what i'm here to explain now i'm going to explain how to set up the diet if you haven't you know got the means to find a coach to do it for you or you find it laborious going through all the different advice on this i'm just going to show you the bare essentials of what you need to look up and figure out on on your own i promise this should only take about 30 40 minutes maybe it's a, if it's the very first time you've heard these concepts it could take you just over an hour but if you think about the time that you spend like watching videos like this even or the time you spend in the gym and what impact this will have on your progress it is worth several hours so even if it takes over one hour it's worth it so with the nutrition the two things that you're trying to get from it are all the nutrients themselves the essential nutrients and there's a big long list of them you know i could go through all of the essential amino acids like valine and tryptophan and all the rest of them reel all of them off but the long and short of it is if you eat eggs red meat fatty fish a few green vegetables you'll have like all of them covered then the other thing that you need to get from your diet is the energy so 
I've talked about calories before. I don't believe in calorie deficits and trying to lose weight that way, but I do believe in having enough energy, particularly when you're trying to train and gain. So what everyone will do when they plan this for you, or, you know, diets that are based a certain weights that are just out there as a cookie cutter one, they're all working off what's called your basal metabolic rate. And what that is, is the idea that there's an amount of energy that it takes for your body to just survive as it is. This is before any extra exercise or anything. This is just the energy that your body needs to survive and run its processes like all of your organs working and such like. That's called your basal metabolic rate, and there are several ways of calculating it. There are different formulas for it. Different researchers have their own methods of, of calculating it with their own formulas that are largely based on like your age, height, and weight, and stuff like that. So actually pick any of them, because they're all going to yield roughly the same results. And what you do is you Google BMR calculator and there'll be a calculator on tool online, many such things that will do it for you. Or if you want to really drill into it more and, and you know understand how it's worked out, you can Google BMR calculation formula and do the formula and do it manually yourself. But it's gonna be easier if you just Google BMR calculator and then it's gonna there are gonna be several of them. You're gonna put in your age, weight, height usually. Um, you may have to convert it from metric to imperial, you know, centimetres and metres to feet and inches, but uh, your age should always stay the same. <laughs> I, think, I think we just measure that in years, and uh, if you were born on that one day of a leap year, no, you're not like, you're not like only ageing one year every four years, you are in fact the same age as like if you were born the day before. And what you do, you pull all that in and it'll give you your BMR. Now that's not going to give you the amount of energy that you need because the next stage you'd want to do to get enough energy on this from your diet is Google maintenance calories. Right, this, I'll put this in the, you know what, I'll put this in the description, I'll make it easy for you. I'll just put these terms in the description. But what you do is you Google maintenance calories and activity level. And they're like the BMR, there's different researchers that have different formulas for working out what your theoretical like maintenance level calories are. So that's basically your BMR requirements of your organs functioning, plus the energy required for you to go about and actually do stuff like, you know, walk to the bus stop to go to work and then training on top of that and the energy that takes. And there's basically levels of it where it will call like, you know, sedentary, light activity, moderate, moderate activity, extremely high activity. If, you, if you're Googling it and you're seeing like a, a list like that, you're onto the right thing. And the multiplier factor will be one point something. That one point something is one point whatever it is, your BMR. So if one of the levels in that say moderately active is BMR times 1.3, I don't remember off the top of my head, but for the sake of argument, it's 1.3. That would be your maintenance calories, and the one is whatever your BMR is. So say your BMR has come out at like 2,100, say. It'd be 2,100 times 1.3, and, you know, the answer's going to, you know, I'm not going to do the maths here and now, but it's going to be, you know, just shy of like 3,000. And that's the that's number resulting calories. Now what you do, you want to eat a little bit more than that, like for gaining. So do it carefully to start with, because you're, what you're going to do is you're gonna baseline your diet with the numbers and the foods in a meal plan. And then you're gonna measure the results like week on week. I've talked about this in previous videos, but that's what you're gonna do. So you take that number and you fiddle around with it with all the info you can find on nutrition. The most authoritative sources would be the book, uh, Composition of Foods by McCanson Widdison. That's what all the dietitians and nutritionists you know, use and dietetics courses and all the rest of it. If you want something for free that's considered authoritative, there's the USDA food tables. So that's another thing you, I'll put in the description. You can go away and Google USDA food tables. So that's got the food data, calories, protein, carbohydrates, fats, micronutrients of all the foods, including the you know fake foods, processed foods. And you can build to, let's say you're new at this, you go do like three, 300 like over whatever your maintenance level was. So. You know, in that example before, you had like 2,100 times 1.3, so it's, you know, whatever it was. 
whatever that calorie total is, add 300 to it because you want excess energy for the gaining, <laughs> your gaining size here, gaining weight, or it takes more energy to build muscle, and none of, the, none of these calculations are based on doing the activity and building the muscle, so we're putting in more energy to do that as well. And you're going to build up to that calorie total with the foods from the USDA tables or McCanson Widdison's uh, composition of foods or from the info that you can find on the nutrition labels on the packets and um, or even on supermarket websites they'll usually provide the full nutritional information of all the products that they sell so that's another way of getting hold of the rough numbers it's always a rough estimate you know, no plan survives first contact. This is exactly like that. That's why you have to baseline the diet and track the results, as I keep on saying. So you're going to build up to that number. They say a gram of protein per pound of body weight. The research supports this about 0.7 or so. Um, so people, you know, to not be lacking and the kind of margin of error just round it up to, to a gram per pound of body weight on the protein side. That's from complete protein sources, so that's animal protein or combinations like in my previous video where I talked about plant foods, plant-based diet and complete protein sources where you're combining them to get all of the amino acids if you need to look back at that. But you make sure that in the combination you're getting complete protein up to that gram total now. This is where the research fails you. If you're a little bit naughty and you're, you know, you're getting a little bit saucy with your bodybuilding and everything like that, you can use more protein. There's no research that proves this, but experience proves this. There's no need for research in, in that because there's not really any studies that are actually about real bodybuilding. It's all remedial for people regaining muscle mass like after they've you know, had a severe accident or, or um, you know, problems with their hormones and all that sort of thing. So you can do more than the pound per gram and make use of it if you're a little bit adventurous with your hobby here so you know let's say if you're a very very sensible person it's going to be 0.7 to 1 grams of protein per pound of your current body weight if you're a little bit overexcited about your bodybuilding maybe it's going to be like 400 grams or so <laughs> and then that's going to be times four because it's four calories per gram of protein in the diet and you're going to get up to that total of whatever that calories plus activity level plus 300 extra for the building just to start with and whatever numbers are left you're then going to make out of the carbohydrates and the fats now if you're being even more adventurous with your bodybuilding and there's other medicines that diabetics sometimes need to use you're going to have to be very careful about calculating your carbohydrates and having enough of them and you're probably not going to want to have the fats with the carbohydrates but that's a big topic like for another video i'm just saying for now but basically you probably want the carbohydrates and protein lean protein meals a little bit closer to the workouts generally speaking and the fat and protein combo meals so that's more like your steaks and eggs and stuff like that morning and evening or perhaps just evening but you're gonna to have to play around with this with the foods that you like and the numbers that are in the fats and in the carbohydrates to bring you up to that overall total set it in a meal plan and then eat the same every day and if you're going to switch something it has to be from the same food group it's probably not going to be a switch that you're interested in making because you chose the foods that went into this in the first place it's going to be you know switching tilapia for tuna you know when probably the switch you wanted was like a, a protein bar but it, it don't work like that. don't work like that you're going to have to switch in something that's from the same food group to the to the same uh, macro nutrient numbers if you are going to do any switches but broadly speaking just eat the same every day for a week and then measure your body weight again in a week's time or two weeks time proper body weight that's first thing in the morning before you eat before you drink and after you've gone to the toilet and with no clothes on that's true body weight track that from day one check in on it in week seven i mean this is all like the stuff that basically a coach would do for you like if they if they've um you know know what they're doing but um, it can be done on your own and I'm here to help explain how you can do it on, on your own if you haven't got means for, for a coach right now or, or you know you like that DIY and learning more yourself you do that but also if you want to be really good at it like in my bodybuilding measurements um, protocols revealed video 
you want to be taking caliper measurements in certain sites of your body and the tape measure of the muscle girth because because we're, we're bodybuilding we're not just like we're not we're not weight watchers you know <laughs> we're not just trying to take you up and down in body weight you're trying to change your body so the calipers are going to give you an estimate as best as you can diy style of how much subcutaneous fat is going up or down and the tape measure is going to give you as close of an idea as you can diy it on a weekly basis of how your you know, muscle and your growth is going like week by week by week obviously there's way more precise methods like getting a dexa scan <laughs> you know doing that weekly is probably going to be cost prohibitive to almost everyone watching this video or taking this up as a hobby so i don't you know i don't steer towards that i steer towards the tape measure and the calipers so that's what you're going to do week on week and if the gains are favorable, just carry on. If you're bored of the food, switch it to meet the same requirements from the same food groups. So maybe not the switches you wanted ideally, but, but do that just to keep it running and do it again. If it looks like you might be gaining too much fat, because what the calipers saying is going up when like the girth of your arms is not going up, um, you maybe want to pull back a bit. So pull out of the fats, pull out of the carbohydrates from, from the plan re-baseline for the next week and run again you see what i mean now that's how you set up your own muscle building diet with the foods that you like with the energy that it needs to do this and uh, a little bit of an extra naughty advice well remarks on such things as well so if you think that sort of thing is useful you should definitely subscribe and share this sort of video and the whole thing <laughs> of talking about food here for 10-15 minutes has made me extremely hungry so I'm gonna get back on the road and get something to eat okay we're back on the road now I'm really happy with that session I'm really glad to get some of the most important information out there in that little sit down there as well but the time is getting on so uh, I've got a few more remarks to make but there won't be time today to be sitting down for a for a big meal and discussing anything else at length i'm just reflecting on my training there it's been another excellent day i've got problems with the barbell it seems so i think the progression is really going to lie in that dumbbell overhead pressing seated dumbbell press and definitely work harder on these these drop sets how good that was i could have been doing that weeks ago so i'll be honest with myself here that i could be pushing shoulders harder based on what happened today constantly improving really happy to have got today's information out as well because uh you know i've been i've been doing that sort sort of thing with the information for years and years and years and you know never put it out there on the internet in this fashion before so that's um that's something i'm, I'm pleased with being able to explain something like that and hope it's of use but if you have any questions about um that method of setting up your diet for a gaining kind of phase just pop them in the comments and i'll pick them up on a chat on another day's video as soon as possible really and any other requests i'll pick them up as well of course other than that it just remains for me to say have a great week training and i'll be back online tomorrow cheers <laughs>